Is Derek uh, on the line by any chance? Yeah, I'm still around. Awesome, cool. So I'd like to thank Derek and also Christoph for uh, helping to review um, this documentation. Um, so one of the things that I um, hear at LSFMM for a while now was, oh, you know, IOMAP is complex, it's difficult. Well, hopefully this might help. So we have some series of guidance, some sort of concocted documentation, um, and brain farts, you know, because uh, this is still evolving, right? It's because we only have so many file systems using it. Um, so take a look. Uh, basically, you can just look on Google for uh, kernel newbies, and then just slash kernel projects IOMAP. Um, and then, yeah, I have some slides, but I, I guess, yeah, well, let me just try to pull up the slides. Uh, in the meantime, um, do folks have present, you know, um, pressing things regarding um, IOMAP that they would like to, to discuss? Otherwise, we'll, we can review some of this documentation and then review questions at the end. It'll, it'll allow me to pull my documentation yeah, sure, yeah, in the yeah, meantime. Of course, um, the one thing which I found uh, most confusing about IOMAP is the um, the units of the argument. Are these bytes, sectors, ranges, what? So um, really would be helpful if you could have an well inman documentation with the header files and okay, and information. This argument is in sectors and this is in bytes. Because that really tends to confuse things as um, IOMAP uh, as of now, only works on pages, so page size m is actually a viable thing because that's the only thing wh they can operate on. But at the same time, you can also g give them a sector argument, which then indicates, right, I'm only interested in the sector which belongs to the pa which is part of the page which you are about to read. So um, it's a bit confusing because you don't really know right, what is it I'm told that I, I need to put uh, put here. That's one thing, and um, what also uh, what I has been desperately missing is the um, relationship between the various ops which you have, because I've counted and got uh, got up to at least well three types of different ops. So you have the read ops, you have the write ops, you have the write back ops, and you have the <coughs> Yeah, and why, and why are they different? So, so, so yeah, yeah, I actually had the same exact reaction when I started reviewing this because, uh, you know, I came from the outside trying to first understand it, and I was like, what the fuck, right? Exactly. So I looked at this, and I didn't know, and Derek made it clear in the mailing list, and it, it makes sense in retrospect, right? As you're trying to go, you know, think, think of it this way. You have a routine, you have all these different types of operations and all these different possible flags. You're going to be branching the hell out of that routine, and it's going to be... <laughs> Cyclomatic complexity, I think it's called. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't mind. Um, so, so, so basically, what 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 you had them doing is is instead, you basically just have dedicated operations for very sp small specific operations for the file system. Um, so that is fine if they're documented what they're for. Well, that's the the point here. So that's the point here. And um, so now, the the way to think about this is try to target your file system by the different main operations: buffered I/O, direct I/O, reads. Um, there's uh, one for extent mapping, so let, let's review that, right? Because I think there's some important warnings about BMAP here that Derek made, um, and Christoph too. Um, who, who here is a fan of BMAP? Yeah. <laughs> great, great, it's a good thing that people laugh instead. <laughs> so um, there's warnings here about the BMAP and why it's uh, not, not, not ideal. So pretty much, you know, you split it by these operations and you have very specific targeted IO map calls for them. So it's really, IOMAP is an iterator for bytes, for ranges. And it also tries to help uh, replace, you know, the old uh, block range um, operations that we have. One of the things that is missing here is also that there's no helpers for metadata, right? So you either have to implement it yourself, yeah. like XFS does, which we were talking about, right? And this is why it's an issue, right? So you have to consider that for a new file system. I am curious. Um, so that is the essential part of the um, Buffett's discussion we had yesterday. Yes. That um, for metadata, you inevitably will have to have okay, helpers because you can't use the helper which you're about to set up because you're about to set them up. So the question um, there, I think, would be and should be, but I doesn't think, matter. is which file system would be willing to port over 
through some something new, right? It, it doesn't seem seem like there's enough interest, and it's understandably so, right? You, you can't force anyone to consider to no, port over, course. right? No, but so, but, so, but um, so um, in the end, mm -hmm. I guess I OMAP is the way to go. Basically, is the way how file system should be designed nowadays because that's a new API. Yeah, absolutely. And also. From my perspective, IOMAP is basically a prerequisite if you if you want to go or if we want to go to larger block sizes. Well, yeah, absolutely. That that's kind of so like because any, I, yes. I had a, I had to look at at, at buffer hats and um, yes. Yeah, so so sorry, Joseph, but converting buffer hats to over two folders is a no, no. Just say no. And um, so really, the only way. How we can make this work? Wait, say it again. It's converting what to what? Buffer heads. Buffer mm -hmm. heads over to folios is either a complete no-brainer because right. we're already using yeah, folios, yeah. so there's nothing to be done, yes. or it's a hell of a work because you wouldn't you redesign the entire buffer head thing. Right. So, so, right. So essentially, we're going to. It seems from the other meetings we, we had decided that we're going to be keep buffer head path uh, with no uh, order, you know, zero so folios. So that means essentially you don't get large block size either. So. Yes. IOMAP is the only way forward for large block sizes. Yes. But at the same time, if you're running with large, large block sizes, um, you have to make a distinction somewhere. So the um, current patch that which Christoph did was make this a config option. Yes, correct. And um, it, really it, depends, it really depends how this patch that moves forward. I, th I, th I mean, it, it there I only found, found so far, well, there's a, a couple bugs there, but Think of it this way, right? If you don't depend on a file system that requires buffer heads, then why would you need? But I do. Yes, okay, with distribution does, yes, yes. No, not the distribution. You might want to boot your system. And um, this system might be running into And this system might be uh, having a UEFI file system, uh, which well you I actually I need for booting. Again, I'm not sure how Amazon Linux did it, but I can tell you they, they're not using BFAT at all. And that they're, they're is brilliant for Amazon. I, yes, good, well done. It doesn't help me because I'm my saying it seems to be possible somehow with EFI vars and system D. I don't know how they did it. Exactly. So uh, there's no so there's no way how you could be doing this because all system the systems I am running on have a UFI firmware, and there's no way in hell I can change it. And this UFI firmware will be having to read a VFAT in order to boot. So there will be a VFAT, inevitably. And most USB sticks. Which and so yes, I might be able to boot and I might be able to boot a system which doesn't have support for VFAT, but that means I can't access the VFAT from the system, means I can't update it. So really it's no. But okay. anyway, it doesn't really matter because I have converted it. So that is not the point. So you have patches for that? Um, like yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah, I've got awesome. them. I can read stuff. I might be able to write eventually. <laughs> haven't tried though. Awesome. So uh, for those who haven't considered, you know, uh, seeing if it's possible to convert your file system over, uh, here's some generic guidelines. Uh, I'm sure folks who have already started working on that may be able to provide some imp input here. The general guidelines is to try to look di at direct I.O. first. Um, would you mind changing the order there? Well, you know, it's up to community, right? So you, what do you guys think? You know? Yeah, so a one, op a one op at a time is correct, but direct I.O. should be listed last. Because that's the one which you really want here, to touch. Here, please, please. Yeah, I, there's a, the two direct IOs first. <laughs> like, so ButterFS has direct IO uh, map because the buffered one has been approved king because it involves completely changing how all the read page and write page and validate page and all of those things work. And like the write back callbacks and like every, like buffered for sure deserves to be last. Direct IO is a lot more straightforward because the old code and the new code are s very similar, um, and it just like takes away a lot of the extra scaffolding that you had before. Yeah, I, I think. Right on. Yeah. So I, I think the other thing that's probably worth sort of inserting a cautionary note here is I am not sure that trying to convert the simple file systems first is a good idea because some of the necessary infrastructure to make life a little bit less painful isn't quite all there yet. And one of the really big examples that were given is uh, the metadata 
reads and writes, right? We, we don't have a solution for that. So you can convert a simple file. First of all, many simple file systems don't even do direct I.O. at all, period, right? Like, you know. Then the conversion yeah, is done. Already. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> uh, like Amiga DOS, the, the Amiga DOS file system doesn't support direct I.O. The HFS file system doesn't support direct I.O. last I checked. So saying do it first isn't really going to help. Yeah. But what they do need is the ability to read and write um, metadata blocks. So and until we actually give them an easy solution, don't ask them to convert, and then they run away screaming. <laughs> so maybe, like, I think there are two different things. One is the converting the data path to IO map, and that can be done very much now, I believe. The other thing is getting rid of buffer heads, which is a separate discussion. And that, I, I completely agree with you, we have to have like some s sane yes. story for them. Yes, and uh, but it also, um, I would like to point out that we shouldn't force anyone. So yes. that's the main, main idea here behind it. So that is the goal we want to head for, but we cannot afford, uh, force anyone to do you. Now, convert this file system now. now. Yeah, sure. Right, it's not going to work. So if you find someone who is, has enough interest to do the work, by all means, let him do it and give him some, like this one, give him some hand-holding, right, okay, have a look here, that roughly tells you what you need to do. That is good enough. But and um, then if people care, they can see, all right, where are we? So, or is the use case now something I can do? Or is something missing? And there's so if there's something, something missing, like say, the ISO file system, right, maybe he cares enough to convert it. If he doesn't, right, so he doesn't get an ISO file system. That's, yeah, tough shit. Yeah, with the IOMAP, so, so just by, for your information, so we are, I'm going to merge for the next merge window, like I have the patches already, so uh, conversion of TXT to direct IO path to the IOMAP, so that, so that's going to be queued, which changes also some of the DFS stuff to make it easier for file systems to, con like the simple file system to convert to IOMAP because there are some problems with like sync direct IO currently where it's impossible to use current DFS helpers with IO map. So that's a, a, and like complex file systems like ext4, btrfs on, or xfs don't care because they do their own thing anyway, but like for the file systems that mostly use DFS, like they need changes. So, so that's, that's being done and queued in my tree. Uh, we are working with Ritesh on converting ext to di data path to IOMAP. I'm now speaking about only data path yeah, because, as I said, I believe there the generic story is there and it really only needs the conversion. Then the second part is, is handling the metadata, and for that, I don't have it downstream. Um, there's something I've been talking to Edge Willy about this that, um, I mean, with, with, with this um, FUD thing. I need to have something like this. I already have the FUD on the header now. But really what we figured is that in the end, it doesn't really matter for reading whether we read 512 bytes or an entire, or an entire page. doesn't really matter at the end of the day as long as we get the pointer to the data, which we have been looking for. So and that is the one thing which, I'm, which we hope to, to, to change, that you can read a folio, given the basic put in the offset, right? Okay, this is the, the index I want to read. Then you get the folio back and the pointer to the data, wh where the data starts, uh, which you have been looking for. I guess that should be getting us quite a long way, because that's roughly what we need. And then j we just need to figure out a way what do we do for writing. Because really, writing should be done via write pages, but with modern file systems and with modern things, it should all everything should be done via write, write pages. But this is not quite how the original metadata read and write did work because ev where everything was synchronous, uh, you, you would just write individual blocks and that, uh, that was it. So we really have to look close to see whether that is feasible, that whether, can, whether we even can do that. Because it means that everything will be bunched up and we are writing out whatever is there. We don't really have a control about what will be written. So it needs to be figured, but uh, let's see. We are, we are getting there slowly. And yes, you are completely right. We have to put this, once we have the header, we have to put it up there to tell them, right, okay, this is the way how we could do the media data read. So uh, uh, this is this is Ritesh here. Uh, I do have to kind of maybe add uh, a couple of uh, things that I noticed uh, while uh, we are working on converting ext2 um, buffered IO path as well. So uh, I mean, like apart from ext2 directory handling code, uh, I, at this point of time, although I don't have a, a you know direct code for sharing, but I don't think so. Um, 
uh, we, we have a lot of problem for let's say even ext to to kind of go to buffered io uh, having said that there are a uh, couple of open problems in io map path which which kind of needs to be addressed one i think there is already a patch series that uh, that is out there uh, thanks for all the reviewers who are kind of uh, helping with that patch series which is basically tracking uh, you know uh, per block dirty tracking uh, in folio and because otherwise you, you have thank you thank you we need this yep. yeah uh, and, and the second one i think is one which uh, matthew has pointed out uh, there is an existing problem which is like you know for legacy file systems uh, there is a flag in buffered which is bh underscore boundary um, i think that is that was mainly used for uh, making sure that you don't have an io patterns which can basically kind of cause your performance problems so 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 what i'm trying to say here is like for for example file systems like ext2 which has an indirect block uh, you can have 0 to 11 blocks and then you can have an indirect block which is coming from a you know discontiguous uh, you know uh, block area and so when you basically submit a bio if the bio gets rearranged you can actually have a data access pattern which is not really good and so that was the reason bh boundary was actually got added as a flag in buffered uh, at this point of time i think iomap doesn't have that you know I, I don't think so that there is a way to handle that um, yeah maybe that would be one other problem after um, you know we basically do the dirty range tracking fix i think this is one of the open problem that I, I, iomap might kind of need that I think the good news is that that particular issue is uh, an issue for those file systems that are actually using a V7 Unix style indirect uh, layout, right, or, or system. VFAT doesn't use that, um, and more modern file systems that use extent mapping don't need it. Um, and so that's right. an example of something where, you know, IOMAP may eventually decide that they want to actually support that so that we can get a higher performance for these simple file systems like ext2, like Minix, like UFS. Um, or there may be a decision um, that, you know, we don't care about performance for those older legacy file systems, and so maybe we'll just live with a performance hit um, on those file systems. And so, you know, again, I think this is an example of where I would certainly recommend going back to this documentation that there needs to be a big warning. Here be dragons. Um, there's an ongoing conversation. This documentation may very well go out of date because we're trying to make life easier for people. Uh, and if things look really scary right now, uh, you know, hang on. And really, I think the targeted audience for this should be for those early adopters who are willing to, you know, live with the fact that, you know, things are still sort of under construction um, and, you know, we shouldn't promise that it's going to be easy because it's not easy yet. <laughs> and that was also my consideration that at the end of the day, most of the old, on fi uh, old file systems have outlived their use usefulness. So they're really just there for, let's say, legacy access. So like say VFAT, yes, you're not getting rid of because it's actually built into the hardware in a certain system like x86, but really you only care that you can access it. You're really not caring whether it's fast or something. So I'd be perfectly happy with just, uh, with just making it ever so slightly slower because plants are no longer modest. Same goes for things like ISOFS. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know, but it might be slow, but then in the end it was just slow to start with, so you're not losing anything by just making it a tad slower, if that were the need. So I wouldn't le let us hold up by performance considerations because in the end of the day, mm, if you care, write a different file system. Another thing is testing, right? Um, so Giancarra had mentioned, you know, one of the LTP tests that he ran to test uh, direct IO, for instance. Is there any other sort of test that folks are interested in? Yeah, on mode, <laughs> obviously, we have tests uh, like the, the last one we did on the IO part of the test, of the FS test of the client side, side of things. Uh, 
Um, there was one lingering other thing, curiosity, when one was reviewing the state of the art of uh, IOMAC and its adoption, and one of them was, uh, why does uh, ButterFS only have one? And, you know, the reason basically is uh, it focused on direct I.O., and there's a lot of work that Goldwyn has been doing. If you see his patches, uh, you'll see a lot of work there, um, you know, fixing a whole bunch of locking stuff. That work needs to be done first in order to start working on the different IOPS. Is Goldwyn on the line, by any chance? Yes, I am online. Yes, uh, but sorry, I came in late, so I. Oh no, we're just wondering if you want to share any. Do you want to curse IOMAP or any any anything you want to say about IOMAP at this point in time? Well, uh, uh, just to tell you about the state, I'm working on it in the sense of uh, we had the problem of uh, page extent uh, extent locking within page locks. So that had to be reversed, which was quite a task. And uh, once that is complete, uh, the, we, we had to start with the IOMAP work on ButterFS. It is using a lot of hacks as well right now, at least at, the, at what the state is right now, uh, with uh, having page private uh, set by ButterFS. Uh, it, that is kind of overloaded by uh, IOMAP with their own uh, sub-page data structures. So uh, I'm, I'm, there are a couple of hackish patches, but once I, it gets into review, hopefully I'll have better ideas once people start reviewing on this. Uh, I hope to do a code drop by the end of this month and do the first one, first part of it and see, uh, get some review comments on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of discussion with respect to how we go forward with that. But uh, that's what my target deadline is right now. Cool. By the way, I was Ritesh, I was just checking uh, regarding the boundary, boundary handling. Uh, and I actually don't think we really need to do anything special there. Like basically the boundary handling is workaround for the fact that when you are block mapping block by block, you don't know about the contiguous extent, yeah? And you don't know whether this is the last block in the contiguous extent or not. And and basically the boundary handling is there so that the partition can tell you, know, this is the last block in the co contiguous extent. So just submit whatever you have because I will need more time to get you anything else. Uh, but with the IO map, we have this like implicitly encoded in the fact that we simply return all the contiguous extents. So after each extent, we, uh, we know that we are basically in this situation that likely now is the right time to submit. So I mm, long story okay, short, yeah. I believe that if we just ignore the boundary thing, then we will be mostly fine. Right, right. Okay. Because because of the because of the way I think we map it, I think uh, you're saying that the file system will always return that contiguous range, and so we might not even require the BH boundary to be handled. Yeah, exactly. Like right. as, as right. I was checking how the boundary flag is actually used in mpage and direct IO code, and it's basically used exactly in the sense like, you know, now I am now the next block is likely going to be discontinuous, so let's submit whatever I have because. You know, I'll be submitting soon. So, yeah. but I o in IOMAP, this is implicitly done by the fact that IOMAP begin simply returns the whole extent already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Everybody. Well, that's pretty much all I had. I guess I'd like to ask also folks to take a look at the documentation to get uh, an account on kernelnewbies.org, just request one. You won't be able to do any edits. It's a simple edit onto a page where you're an editor in the editors group, and we just have to add you to the list there, and then basically you can just go go to town. So please please review, especially those who are actively working into converting file systems at this point in time. Uh, let us know what you think, or just please just edit it. Don't let us know actually yet. Don't don't email anyone. Just request an account. Email us if you already added it, and then just ask to be added to the editors group. Um, the editors group is. I think the tab here on the on the left or something like that. And then you could just go to town and edit, and then maybe in one or two kernel releases, we can try to strive to get this upstream into the kernel as proper documentation. Does that sound reasonable? Soon is probably better, but it is, isn't it easier to keep this in a wiki before it gets into, you know, git form?
All right, so fuck it. I'll just try to do a patch that adds this right now. CC people, and that's it. We'll, we'll go to town there. All right. All right, we'll do that. Thank you.